Did you guys watch Battle of the Belts? Yes. Yeah. Thank God. Okay, because I didn't mention it. But if there's ever a Battle of the Belts, make sure you watch it for the show. I'll say that much. If you're a listener, I don't know if I can say the same. Okay. I posted this on Twitter. I got to get this out of the way. We have a collision show every week. It's a yep. weekly show. It's on Saturday. Yes. How come the show that is supposed to be special, that only airs three, maybe four times a year, has a lesser lineup than the one that's on every week? Shouldn't this be like a Clash of the Champions or something of that magnitude? No, it's a show thrown together looks like at the very last minute where they just drew names out of a hat to def- to to challenge for a belt. Well, here's the deal, everyone. When they first announced that they were going to do Battle of the Belts, that's what everyone said, Clash of the Champions. And obviously, you can't really do Clash of the Champions anymore because Clash of the Champions was special because you would watch a show where nothing happened every week. Yes. And then they would have a Clash of the Champions, which was actually special. Fair. Well, now you've got these shows where, you know, AEW's got 18 titles, and uh, a number of them are defended on every last single television show. Mm-hmm. And so they add a Battle of the Belts. And what is Battle of the Belts? Well, they got paid for it. And that's why they do it three, four times a year or whatever. But, yes, like if you want people to watch it, I mean, here's the thing. You're not going to make people watch it by advertising championship matches because you have championship matches on every single show. Right. The only way that you're going to get people to invest in this show is if they're pretty much guaranteed that there's going to be a title change every time there is one. Mm. And as we talked about a long time ago, I think there have been two title changes in the entire history of Battle of the Belts. They were, uh, I think it was both involving Sammy Guevara. And uh, one was like after he got hurt and then the other belt was up for grabs. I, I can't remember what the situation was, but I mean, this was like episode one or two or something. It was like a long time ago. And now it's, well, here's more championship matches and titles never change hands. They're not even marquee title matches. I mean, I should never have to say this because the reality is that AEW took off because WWE sucked in 2019 and it was a perfect time to spring up as an alternative but man i watched three hours of AEW on saturday night and i mean i watched three hours of raw monday and for sure the third hour of raw monday was way better than this third hour of AEW. and you know i watched it but my god it was actually the last 90 minutes of the three hour block yeah as we'll get to here they had one great match on sure. Collision, and it was the opener. Really, yeah, the, the, this three-hour block peaked in the first 20 minutes. And after that, it's like, I mean, what did we get? There was nothing you needed to see. So on, uh, just to take off, you said that you're guaranteed a title match. How about some sort of a build to the matches? Some sort of a build up to make th- something important? Well, yes, there should be a build to something champion. Well, yeah, obviously. But, I mean, at least... You know, I should never watch a Battle of the Belts and feel like, why did I watch that? Like, yeah. there was no reason whatsoever to watch that. There was no angle. 100%. There was no title change. It was just, it was an hour of more matches. And not even marquee matches. We have much bigger matches coming up on Dynamite. We had a much bigger match on Rampage. And mm-hmm. we had a much bigger match on Collision. Well, I guess we'll talk about it, though. Sure. We watched, first of all, AEW Collision, October 21st, 2020. The better show. Well, because of one match. Fair. The opener, Brian Danielson versus Andrade uh, Idolo, was awesome. I've watched a lot of great Brian Danielson matches lately, which is not a complaint. But uh, I I keep calling his matches sublime. And I'm ha- I, have, I have not found a great way to d- describe what makes, why that word is so perfect for this until tonight. Because I watched this. And they were wrestling. I was it was fine, but they weren't really doing anything spectacular. And it goes to commercial. I thought, man, what a commercial two minutes in. And they went to fast forward. Ten minutes had gone by. Time flew by. They were out there for ten minutes. And even though there was no great tope or power bomb or anything like this, there was nothing that stood out. 
it was just so easy to watch and smooth that 10 minutes felt like two. That's a good thing. And they came back in the second half. The drama continued to build. We had moonsaults to the floor, a split leg moonsault by Andrade. Danielson is making his comeback, and he, he can't get the Uma Plata. So Andrade turns the Uma Plata into a figure four, but he tries the figure eight. That allows Danielson a chance to reach for the ropes and get them. They're trading strikes, and there's this awesome moment where Andrade fakes a big boot, which allows him to hit a spinning back elbow. That was awesome. And this big-ass series of counters and cradles, and Danielson ends up getting the final cradle, gets a three-count and wins. 20 minutes of greatness. Loved it, loved it, loved it. I have absolutely nothing bad to say about this match, except Tony Khan building it up really big as his dream match that he had to tune in to see. And match was awesome, but, I mean, this was not a dream match. This was just a great match that we could see on Saturday night. And uh, once the bell rang, I mean, once it started... I mean, this match was spectacular. This was the best match by far that we saw all night. And, I mean, Brian Danielson is fantastic. Andrade was awesome in this match. I mean, it was just a wrestling match forever. They did the deal where you wrestled to a stalemate. They did it like five times, and it never got old. And then we had the striking battle, and then we had all the high spots, and they told a, a great story. It was like they built to the big stuff there at the end. And finally, big chopping battle and, you know, cradle, cradle. The cradles were so awesome there at the end. It wasn't just the usual, you know, the, a lot of people do the Eddie Guerrero, uh, Dean Malenko cradle series, which we've seen mm -hmm. five million times since like 1995. But uh, this one was absolutely totally different. All of these totally wacky cradles. And finally, Brian Pinnon with a crucifix, of all things. Match was awesome. My three hours was worth it for the, just this one match. But that is not an excuse for everything else. I'm just saying it was worth it for this match. <laughs> it's funny because usually when they have the the luchadors or the or the, or the high flying guys out there, the X division, if you will, they start off their match with trading cradles and exchanges and roll ups, and then they come to a stalemate. No, no, they save that to the end. And Danielson won with a cradle that was it was so good. It was a great match. If you didn't see it, go out of your way and see it. I have one other cr criticism, but it isn't actually about the match itself, but it is about the aftermath. When they go to shake hands and the lights go out, and they come back on and Malachi Black is in the ring, and he kills Brian Danielson. This is a return of Malachi, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Now, listen. This, like in a vacuum, it was great, okay? I actually have no problem with what they did afterwards. It was actually great. Malachi is black. It's the big return. Now, I don't want to do the comparisons like what would WWE do or whatever, but I am going to tell you what they would do. They would have this angle, and then at the top of the second hour, they would recap what happened here with the return of Malachi Black, knocking out Brian Danielson. And then when they opened up Battle of the Belts, they would recap what happened with Malachi laying out Brian Danielson. And, uh, and, you know, you would not forget it, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, what they did here was the lights went out three times on this show. The House of Black appeared three times on this show. And, like, by the third time, I was like, bro, I got it. I got mm -hmm. it. Like, you had an idea to turn the lights out and somebody shows up. I didn't need it three times on a single show. So I think that one would have been great. The second one was like, okay, yeah, you know, they're back. By the third time, it was like, holy smokes, bruh. How many times do I have to see these guys? It's too much. Well, that had happened. And Malachi Black appeared here, kicked Danielson in the head. And uh, as you noted, there's, they were back and back and back. But... Uh, I will say that uh, Danielson's been getting a lot of these wins lately, and he's already had his match against MGF, so it's not likely to do that again. And I've been kind of wondering what was on the horizon for him, and well, here it is. He's, Malachi Black is his, uh, next big, his next big match, which should be awesome. I'm thinking the whole thing's going to lead to blood and guts, right? Well, by the end, that certainly seemed to be the... Uh, well, actually, well, yeah, we'll get to that, but yes, that seems, that seems to be where they're going by, like, tomorrow. Yeah, like, you know, uh, yeah, I got it, Lenny. The House of Black took out the Beast. I got that, okay? But, like, is Blood and Guts Wednesday? No. 
As okay, far as I know. so, I mean, did we have to have this happen three times on one show to get the point across that they're feuding with no, two factions? Th- this, no, you no. do one here, you do one on Dynamite, the pay-per-view isn't next weekend, you've got this show, you've got Battle of the Belts, you've got Dynamite, you've got Rampage, you've got Collision, and you've got this for... Several weeks. Uh, two more weeks yeah. until this next pay-per-view, if that's where you're doing it. So, no, you didn't need to do all of that on this show. You have Max Caster on Wednesday was giving MGF unwelcome physical groping. Daddy Ass has been calling himself Mr. Ass for decades now. And then you have the Iron Savages. All these men want to do, in their own words, is eat their opponent's asses. Yeah. Anthony Bones is the straightest guy in this match. Tony Storm also ate ass. What's going on here? Sky Blue has a very... um... Thick. Thank you. Uh, backside, of course, Tony's the same way. So they had to one-up that somehow. Kira Hogan, well, she fits the bill. Kira's running wild, and Tony cuts her off by eating her ass. This is the kinkiest wrestling show I've seen in a long, long time. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the Join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click Join today, and don't miss out.